Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on matrix computation and its application. So in the previous lecture, we have started with that how we can check that the linear transformation is 1, 1 on to or not. So for that one, uh, now we will continue with that concept with the lecture number 32. So in the previous lecture, we have discussed that how we can check that the transformation from u to v a vector space from u to vector space v that t is 1 to 1 and or on to. So that we have seen. So for few examples we have discussed. So now I can discuss another example very important example like So, previously we have discussed the linear operator D that is a differential operator from the C1 space to see the set of all first derivative continuous function to the set of continuous function in the interval from A to B and then we have discussed that D of F is basically F dash or I can define the df by dx. So, it is a derivative we have taken. Now, I want to check whether d is 1, 1 or on to. So, this one I want to check. Now, we know that. So, let first we check about on to. So, for on to we know that for any continuous function f belongs to the set of continuous functions C A B, we are able to take its antiderivative. antiderivative. So, antiderivative we know that this is called the integral basically. So, we and we know that every, every continuous function in the given interval a b we can take its integration. So, from here I can for any continuous function I can define its uh, integral. So, from here I can say that for which implies that I can say that this uh, transformation linear transformation d is on to because i am going from c any continuous function i can take the antiderivative and if i take the antiderivative then this will reach to c1 ab and this is the way we can show that if for any vector in the range space the cab we can have a vector in the domain such that d of that function is equal to this. So, by this way we can say that d is on to. So, here d is on to means the range space of d is equal to the whole space C A B. So, this is defined that d is on to. Now, how to check 1 1. So, it is clear from here that since we know that that the set of all constant if i take the set of all constant and i take the derivative d of dx suppose some constant c then i know this value equal to 0 so from here i can say that the null space that is anti definitely will contain set contain all the constant functions and some other functions that we do not know it may happen that we will get some vectors whose derivative is going to 0. 
So basically I, one thing is sure that all the constant functions that we are going to have that is going to have the derivative equal to 0. So in this case from here I can say that my null space is not equal to 0 space. So this is not equal to 0 space. So from here I can say that that the operator D is so the operator D that the differential operator I can say that this differential operator is not 1 to 1 because I have a constant functions which going to give you the derivative 0. So in this case definitely it is not going to be 1 1. Similarly, now based on this one I just want to give some theorem. Let I take a linear transformation T from the vector space U to V. So be a linear transformation then. So we know that the range space of T is a subspace of V. We also know that null space of T is a subspace of U. So these are the few facts. Third one is that T is 1 1 if and only if the null space of T is, is the 0 space of U, 0 subspace of U, not the space, 0 space, I can say that 0 subspace of U. The fourth one is that if I have a set U1, U2 up to UN that spans U, then T of U1, T of U2, T of UN that set spans range space of T. And the fifth one is that if U is finite dimensional then dimension of RT is always less than the dimension of U and the dimension of RT is also called the rank. So you can uh, write from here that the dimension of range space T is also called rank of T. So these are the few results we want to prove. So the first two results we have already proved when we have discussed about the matrices from A n to A m. So these things so you can check from the, uh, the lecture based on that one and it is very easy to show also. Now, I can write the first and second proof yes. have already been discussed. So let us st study about the third one. So it says that my transformation is 1 1 if and only if the null space is a 0 subspace of u. So let us prove this one. So in this case what I do is that first I will check that let my t is 1 1. So 
it means if the t is 1 1 then I can say that t and also I know that t of 0 of u always map to 0 of v. So, this I can write then t is 1 1 also this is true for all the linear transformation. So, if it is 1 1 and this is also true, so which implies that the null space of t will contain only 0 element of u and from here this is we are able to show that n t is the only 0 subspace of u. Conversely, let n t contains only 0 element that is a 0 subspace of u. Now, let t of u 1 is equal to t of u 2 for u 1 and u 2 belongs to u. I can write from here that t of u 1 minus t of u 2 is 0. So, 0 is in the v. Now, from here I can write like this one the t of u 1 minus u 2 is equal to v because this is the linear transformation. Now, from here which implies that u 1 minus u 2 belongs to null space of t because it is mapping to 0. So, it will belong to the null space of t, but null space of t is just containing the 0 element. So, which implies that u 1 minus u 2 is equal to 0 and that shows that u 1 is equal to u 2 and this is the way we can show we can prove that which implies that the t is 1 to 1. So, from here I can say that t is 1 to 1. So, if I need to check the linear transformation is 1 to 1 or not, we should concentrate about the null space. If we are able to find a element other than 0 element which is mapping to the 0 element under this transformation, then from there I can say that the given transformation is not 1 1. So, this is we are able to show. So, the next one is fourth one. Now, it is given that u 1, u 2, u n the span is u. So, it is given to me. Now, from here we need to show that t of u 1, t of u 2, t of u n if I take the span of this one that is equal to r t. So, this we need to show. Now, from here what I need to do is that so, I will take the one way. So, let so this is the I am taking that let I take a element v belongs to now I can uh, one thing is true that since t of u 1 t of u 2 and t of u n all belongs to the range space of t and r t I know that is a subspace of the uh, vector space v. Then if this belongs to r t their linear combination also belongs to r t and from here I can say that the linear combination then I can write that linear combination of t 
u 1 t u 2 t u n also belongs to R t because I just take the linear combination and by the property there is a linear transformation this belongs to R t. So, from here I can say that their span t u 1 t u 2 t u n also belongs to R t. So, from here I am able to show that so belongs to R t. So, I can say that this is subset of R t the span of this will be subset of R t. So, we are able to show one way. Now, so this is the one of the way I, I can say that because to show that that this is equal to this we need to show that if I take the element from here that should be also belongs to the right hand side and if I take the element from the right hand side it should belongs to the left hand side. So, we have shown that if I taken the element from the left hand side then we are able to show that this belongs to the right hand side. Now, conversely on the other hand not conversely I can write on the other hand if so what I do on the other hand let me take let I take the element v belongs to the range space of t. Now, from here if v belongs to R t then I can say that there exist some u belongs to u such that t of u is equal to v because it is a definition of the linear transformation a transformation from u to v. Now, since u belongs to u so, I can write that u can be written as alpha 1 u 1 plus alpha 2 u 2 alpha n u n because I have it has been given that this u 1 u 2 u n this spans u it means that any vector from u can be written as a linear combination of this one. Now, from here I can write take the linear transformation T u. So, I can write this as alpha 1 u 1 alpha 2 u 2 alpha and u n because here I know that alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n are scalars that we already know and this one I can write as alpha 1 t of u 1 plus alpha t of u 2 alpha n t of u n. It means that and this is equal to my v. So, I can write that the v can be written as this one. So, I have started with the v from the R t and I showed that v can be written as a linear combination of this one. So, which implies that v belongs to the span of t u 1, t u 2, t u n. So, this is the span from here I am able to show that the R t is a subset of span of t u 1 t u 2 t u n. So, from here from the equation 1 and equation 2. So, from equation 1 and 2 we can write that the range space can be written as equal to the span u 1 t u 2 t u n. So, that is the way we can show. So, here you, you just check that we are it has been given that the u 1 u 2 u n they are spanning the whole u it is not given that they are linearly independent or not. So, if 
I take the set of vectors n vectors which is spans u, then I take the corresponding image of these vectors that will span the whole range space RT. So, this is the way we are able to show. Now, we have to show the, the next thing is that the dimension of RT is less than or equal to dimension of u. The fifth one is we can check that the dimension of RT is less than or equal to dimension of u. So, this is uh, clear from here that now I can write from that from above result that is the 4 1. If I say that if u 1, u 2, u n this set is Li, then we know that the given transformation is uniquely determined by the, the value of the transformation at its basis. So, it be then it will be a basis of u, because they are spanning the whole u, they are linear independent. So, it become the basis of u and from here I know that the R t will also span by t of u 1, t of u n. Now, it may happen that if t of u 1, t of u 2, t of u n, if this set is also a lie, then dimension of R t is also equal to n, that is equal to the dimension of u because it is a basis of u and if, if the set T u 1, T u 2, T of u n is linearly dependent, then if it is linearly dependent, then I can remove the those vectors which are the linear combination of the previous one. So, then I can say that the dimension of R t will be less than n. So, from here I can say that dimension or the rank of t is always less than equal to n, where n is the dimension of u, where n is equal to I am taking dimension of u because why I am taking n because I have taken that this is a linear, linear independent set of vectors and n in number. So, I know that this is going to be the dimension of u is going to be n. So, this way we are able to show this result. So, the next thing we are going to discuss is again about that. So, let us do that how to find rank and nullity, how to find the rank and nullity of a linear transformation T. So, that we are going to discuss. Now, for example, I take the suppose there is a transformation from V 3 to V 4. So, I just take one example. So, this is my linear transformation be a linear transformation and define like x 1, x 2, x 3 because it is coming from the V 3 and its image becomes x 1 x 1 plus x 2, x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 and x 3. So, this is a linear transformation it is given to us. Now, the question is find its rank and nullity. So, 
So, it is given to us that this is a linear transformation. Now, from here I want to check find out the rank means the dimension of its range space and the dimension of its null space. Now, let us uh, discuss about the rank. Now, I know that this belongs to RT. So, R t is basically set of all the vector of this form x 1, x 1 plus x 2, x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3, x 3. So, this is the set of R t because it is belongs to. So, this R t I know that is a subspace of V 4. Now, I can write this as x 1, x 1 plus x 2, x 2 plus x 3, x 3. So, this one I can write in the form of I can take x 1 common. So, it will become 1, 1, 1, 0 plus x 2, it will be 0, 1, 1 0 plus x 3 that is 0 0 1 1. So, I am able to find x 1 x 2 x 3 from here. So, that is a way we can find. It means that this vector is a linear combination of these 3 vectors. So, I am now I am able to get these 3 vectors. So, this is my first vector, second vector and the third vector. Now, from here I can say that my range space R t from here I can say that it is R t is spanned by this vector. So, I can call it this one. Now, for the rank I need to check. So, we need to check about linearly independence or linearly dependence. So, these vectors are given to me. I can write this vector in the terms of a matrix as a column vector of a matrix. So, I can write here 1 1 1 0. 0 1 1 0, 0 1 1 0 and 0 0 1 1, 1. So, this is my 4 cross 3 matrix. Now, I can convert this matrix into the row echelon form by I can just make this element 0. So, I can write minus R 1 plus R 2 and minus R 1 plus R 3. So, this will be 1, 1. So, it will be 0 here, 0 here and 0 here. So, that is 0, 0. Now, I am taking minus 1 and 1 it becoming. So, it is 1 here and 0 here. Now, it is again it is 1 here, 1 here, 0, 1. So, I get this p weight element this is another p weight. So, I will make this way minus r 2 plus r 3. So, that will be 1 0 0 0 0 1. So, this will be 0 and this will be 0. So, I am taking here minus 1 adding to here. So, this 0 and this will be 1 1. So, I am able to get this vectors. So, this 3 vectors from here I can say now based on this one I can say from here that rank of this matrix rank is equal to 3 because all these 3 vectors are linearly independent or the vectors 
are linearly independent. So, that things we have already discussed when we have discussed about the matrices. So, from here I can say that the dimension of R t is 3. Now, we have to discuss about the null space, about the nullity. Now, the set of n t is all the elements, all the elements x 1, x 2, x 3 belongs to V 3 such that t of x 1, x 2, x 3 is going to be 0. So, from here I will get that the set x 1, x 1 plus x 2, x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 and this is x 3 that is going to be equal to the 0, 0, 0 because this belongs to <coughs> uh, V 4. So, and the V 4 the 0 element of V 4 containing the 4 elements and from here I can say that equating the values. So, my x 1 x 2 is equal to x 3 both all the 3 is will coming 0. So, if all the 3 are coming 0 from here I can say that the null space of t will contain only 0 element of v 3. So, from here I can say that nullity of t is 0. So, nullity is 0 and the rank is 3 and from here we can also observe that the rank plus nullity that is here it is coming 3 plus 0 that is equal to 3 and that is equal to the dimension of the domain space V 3. So, this way we are also able to show that rank personality is equal to the dimension of V 3. So, this is how we can find the rank and the nullity of the given linear transformation. So, we will stop here. So, in the today's lecture we have discussed some facts about the linear transformation and then we have showed that from the given linear transformation how we can find I find its rank that is the rank of the linear transformation and nullity of the linear transformation. So, in the next lecture we will also continue with this one. So, thanks for watching uh, thanks very much.